Welcome back to the Friday Club. This week's guest is the wonderful Rishika Ganapathy, Head of Admissions and Marketing at Stonehill International School, Bangalore. Rishika, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. We're delighted to have you as a guest. So I know a little about Stonehill International already. You are a premium day and boarding school in Bangalore offering the IB curriculum for students between age three and 18. Just before we dive in, Rishika, could you tell us a little bit about your role there as Head of Admissions and Marketing, please? Yes, of course. Um, before I started this role uh, in admissions and marketing, I actually joined Stonehill uh, working with the governing council of the school, not as a board member, but really you know, doing all of their work for them in terms of liaising with the school management. So that really helped me get an idea of what the school was about um, in a much broader way, um, you know, in terms of the vision of the school and in terms of the academics and where we were headed and all of that. I moved into admissions um, after the role with the governing council. Um, and then I moved into, you know, marketing as well. And I think, Sophie, what really helps me now uh, in my current role is that background of having, um, you know, that um, exposure within the uh, governing council, um, that hands-on admissions um, experience, you know, the day-by-day, the, the operations, um, paperwork, meeting the families, just, you know. Um, so all of that really comes in handy now um, when I'm working in marketing. Um, so, you know, my role includes communications, external relations, um, digital marketing, all of those aspects, right, apart from admissions. And having that background of, you know, being on the ground and working with parents and children and, you know, all of that comes in very handy now. Can you imagine? So yeah. it sounds like you were really in a good place to join as head of admissions and marketing. At your school, you offer both boarding and day provision for local and international families. What does your student split ratio look like? Um, so we, in terms of nationality, it's a 50-50 split. 50% um, of our students are um, Indian or of Indian origin. And 50% of our students are completely international at any point in time. They are here from over 30, you know, between 30 and 35 different countries. Um, so the boarding part of it, you know, we have two kinds of boarding. We have full-time boarding as well as weekly boarding. So the international uh, students would come into the weekly boarding because, you know, their families are here in Bangalore. They're all working for the multinational companies here. Um, but most of the time to avoid the commute, maybe, you know, the traffic and all of that, um, they put their um, kids into our boarding from Monday to Friday and, you know, they go home for the weekends. Um, so most of our full-time boarders really are Indian students from different parts of India. Uh, we have a lot of um, families from the Middle East, you know, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, those areas, Singapore, Malaysia. Um, but a lot of our international families really are the weekly boarders who go home for the weekends back to Bangalore City. Okay, interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting, I think, to look at what the student community looks like, because I think every school is completely different. Yeah. So one of the things that I was really keen to talk to you about today is the fact that you've very recently launched a brand new website that looks beautiful. Real big congratulations on launching it. Can you tell us a little bit about why now was the right time for Stonehill to have a new website? And what did the project look like for you? Um, I think it was high time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had not really had a change for a while. Um, websites like any technology, you know, uh, anything digital starts looking dated. And you cannot have that when you are calling yourself a premium school, you're calling yourself um, technologically advanced, you cannot have a dated looking website. Uh, it was time to change it, more so when the pandemic hit and school visits stopped, 
right? Admission decisions were being based purely on the website. Um, we had a lot of families from uh, abroad who were not able to travel to India, who were not able to come to Bangalore, that would typically happen in the past. Um, and that would, you know, they would come to the city, take a look at the school, um, decide on whether to accept the assignment or not, whether to choose the school or another. That was not happening. It was critical to have a quality website. Um, and we decided to go for it. Um, we um, worked with a website company that specializes in international schools around the world uh, because we were very clear on what we wanted um, and what we wanted to portray. It had to be as authentic as possible. Um, and so, you know, it was a long project. It took us six months because we rewrote the entire content. Um, we, we revamped the entire website. I think, uh, Sophie, what also um, really, really worked was the fact that we were looking at um, gaining more control of our website in terms of being able to make updates on our own as and when needed, you know, keeping it dynamic, um, keeping it really, really current. Um, and so the platform that we are on now um, enables us to do that. We, we are able to maintain our own content, change images as needed. We don't depend on any external vendor or agency to do that for us. Um, and at this point in time, it has really helped us. I mean, we can see the change in the last one year since we went live. Amazing. And I think most schools will appreciate the importance of a good front of house website that, you know, can do some of the heavy lifting of bringing families to you, especially when we're so used to virtual and remote work and um, working with schools and vendors now. So completely yeah. understand and, that. Um, our website also doesn't just cater to prospective families. We're talking about alumni. We're talking about our parent community internal parent community, we're talking about teachers who might be, you know, recruited and might want to find out what the school is about. So it has to, the website has to portray what you really are all about in the most authentic way possible. Absolutely. And you've mentioned that, that you had to revamp all of the content. One of the topics that I see school marketing teams talk about a lot is that they shoot a lot of content in terms of photo, photos, sometimes videos, and just keeping track of this, sh the sheer volume of content is a day job in and of itself. Yeah. Um, things like making sure you've got the most up to date and data protection that you need on there. Do you have a strategy in place to manage this at Stonehill? Yes, so for us, data protection and privacy is uh, something that's top of our minds at all points, especially in our role, um, where we're using images a lot, images of our student body. Um, so we recently updated our image bank. Um, you know, we called in a professional photographer. We, we got parent permissions, very explicit permissions uh, from parents for each student. Um, telling them where we were going to be using these pictures, in what way, um, you know, do we have their permission and giving them the timelines, this is how long we might be using this for, all of that. Because the thing is the data protection laws, um, social media, digital data protection, all of that is a very gray area at the moment, uh, particularly in India, you know, you might think you are covered, but you don't really know. And it's just better to be, really safe and err on the side of caution. So we um, got all our permissions in place. It, it was chaotic at points, the entire shoot, um, but we did the best we could and we have everything documented now. We know whose pictures we can use, whose we cannot, uh, and we have everything in place. But this is an ongoing process. This is not something that you do once and then you're sorted, right? So, and new laws will come, um, you know, the current laws will become obsolete and you just have to keep pace and you just have to keep trying your best to make sure you're on top of it. I, I guess it's never going to be perfect, but we just have to try. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, it differs from country to country. So it can be really hard for international schools. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we try to keep a balance between international laws and the local Indian laws, right? It has to be a balance. Um, so hopefully we get it right. Wonderful. So yeah. launching a website is a big task in terms of time. Um, it's also for lots of our schools who listen, probably quite a chunky part of their marketing budget for the year. And one of the things we've talked about in the past, Rishika, is the importance of spending money in the right places and making sure you get the best return on your marketing budget. How do you start to break down where your marketing money should go when you look at the year ahead or the five years ahead? Yeah, so um, the way we work, and I think what is ideal generally, um, would be to really have your marketing plan for your academic year in place broadly in the previous academic year, at least eight months in advance, when you are working out the budget for the next year. If, if you put together a budget for the next year with certain activities in mind, with certain um, you know, um, mar uh, marketing activities that are um, non-negotiable and you have to do them and keep a little buffer for things that might come up at that point in time. That usually works, uh, just planning ahead works, but you need to review what you've been doing over the years drop things that don't work. Don't just go and participate in education fairs because everybody's been doing that over the years. If it doesn't work for you, just stop. Move that money somewhere else, you know. Um, if, uh, I just gave that as an example because, you know, um, education fairs are things that might work for a school, might not work for a school. So you participate in some, be wise about what you're choosing. What are the other schools participating in that? Does that really, you know, I mean, does it add value for you to be a part of that particular fair, for example? So, I mean, don't do something just because everybody's doing it. Look at yourself as a school and what you want to achieve. There might be certain very high cost activities that um, don't see immediate return, where you cannot map the admissions and conversions directly to that particular activity, but they might be worth doing just for the sake of brand recall. Or brand, you know, to build your brand equity. So if, if you're spending a lot of money on, on something like, you know, for example, um, a billboard um, at a very strategic location, it's a lot of money. And you will not know how many admissions you're getting from people just looking at that billboard, but you're building a lot of brand value, brand recall, and, you know, recognition of the brand. It will pay off in the long term. Again, it depends on what the communication on that billboard is. Right. But um, uh, that was just an example. So I think if you are spending a lot of money on certain things which do not see immediate return, don't worry about it as long as it's going to pay off in the long term, because it has to be a long term gain. It can, everything doesn't pay off immediately. There might be certain things that you do, um, you know, which might be almost zero cost, but we'll see a lot of admissions happening quickly. You know, we, we have some of those and we've identified some of those events and activities in the past few years where we say that, look, we're not even spending anything, but it really works, you know. Um, so identify what works for you, what doesn't. Don't be afraid to stop something and try something new and try it for more than a year. Try it for two years or three years. And then, you know, I mean, you, you won't see an immediate result most of the time. Um, I think a lot of times marketing is very, very um, specific to your school. There is no one size fits all. And, you know, you have to be um, true to what you want, what kind of students you want in your school, what, who, because it's all about a fit really, you know, what a school works for a certain kind of student and a student needs to work for the school. I mean, you have to know what your core values are as a school, um, what you're looking for and what you're all about. And I think it's really important to school, for schools to not be scared to do something different to other schools in the area, because, you yes. know, they are, they are a different school. That's why they're there. They yes. offer a different value. They bring something else as an option. So actually the right route to that audience might look very different to the school down the road from them or across the street. So yeah. completely agree with that. 
Yeah. Um, and I, I think it can be hard for some schools because, you know, marketing can see three, four years into the future and see, yes, this particular activity will pay off, not today, but in the future. Sometimes we have a short term admissions goal that needs filling. Um, how do you, with oversight of both marketing and admissions, make sure that the balance is there between the two? Yeah, so some of this overlaps with what I was talking about previously, you know, about yeah. our long term goals. And, but I think a key thing that we keep in mind um, at Stonehill is, um, you know, we have our guiding statements, our mission and our vision of the school at the back of our minds at all points. It's, it's always about, um, you know, the right kind of messaging going out. It's the right kind of communication going out. Um, and it's all about making sure that any admission decision that's made works for the school and the student in the long term, right? Um, it's not just about meeting a target. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. you, it, it has to work out uh, for both in the long run and if you know if you are sure about your guiding statements of the school the values of the school and you make all your decisions based on that you really won't go wrong you know and i think that parents pick up on values like that that the school really just wants the right thing for that family um, and sometimes it's not you know we can't be the perfect school for everybody so i think that transparency comes across really well. Yeah. yeah. We've also talked, Rishika, about the, your school's relationships with corporates that are present in Bangalore. Companies like IKEA, Decathlon, Bosch, yeah. Accenture, they all have offices yeah. in Bangalore, don't they? And I know yeah. that they attract international families who will move for work. Yes. So it's in the interest of these companies and their employees to have good relationships with outstanding schools in the area. How do you go about fostering and maintaining relationships with those corporates? Yeah, um, so this is an interesting one. I think our school is unique um, in that um, about more than 40% of our families come from corporates, uh, corporate backgrounds, their employees um, send their children here. It's a preferred choice for corporates um, in Bangalore. We have close to 90 different companies with their student, you know, children coming here. It's, it's a huge number. Um, so you're right. I mean, the companies that you named just now and maybe 85 more. You know, <laughs> yeah. So um, all of them, their students come here. I think we probably are the only school that has an external relations manager. Um, as a role, and there could be others, but you know, I haven't heard of that. But um, it's it's a very critical role. Um, this again, this person is part of the marketing team. Um, the external relations manager really is the point of contact for our corporates, not so much the families. So it's the HR departments and their mobility teams and their, you know, the, the corporate accounts teams who are in touch if they have any issues um, with any process in the school or they have any special requests or any accommodations to be made, they reach out to this person uh, in the marketing team. It really helps us because it sort of really customizes the experience for that corporate. Um, it helps us with word of mouth recommendations because they will definitely pass on the word to incoming families saying, hey, you know, look at Stonehill as a school. Things are just set up the right way, you know? So um, I think um, having that key position really helps us to streamline our processes and make it very corporate friendly as well. Definitely. I think it's such an interesting area to talk about um, this external relations role not every school will have that role um in you know as a role that's filled in their school some schools might not need it but I think having the relationships with organizations in the community obviously yeah. helps the community but helps the school as well yeah. what types of information do you find that these companies might need about your school in order for them to recommend their employees your way or send them your way sorry um, yeah. So um, these corporates, I think the key thing for them um, is 
um, accounts related. So what happens is um, our external re relations person keeps all the corporates updated on things like um, key communication from the head of school, the new fee structure for the next year, any policy related communication which might impact the corporate. Um, you know, things like the withdrawal policy and security deposit refund and small things like that, which are huge for the corporate, right? Where they pay directly. Um, so these are things that, um, you know, we keep them updated about. Um, but also really anything new happening in school is just good to keep the corporates informed. If there's a new facility coming up, you know, if there's a big, huge event coming up, it's just good to keep them in the know because, it's sort of that, you know, you have the school on their minds a lot. Uh, they know that there's something going on with the school all the time. Um, it's not just at the beginning of the admission season that they're thinking about the school and then it disappears from their radar. Um, so, you know, we kind of keep them in the loop of what's going on, all the key events, invite them for some of our community events. You know, um, Stonehill is really a small community. Uh, it's a school with a sense of community. And we have all these events going on. We try to invite some of the key corporate contacts, you know, to be part of these events, just to see what it's all about. Um, yeah, so I think we keep them engaged within our community in different ways. It really sounds like there is this sense of community. It really comes across when you're talking about it. And I think that's one of the really important things about international schools is that they can bring different parts of the local community together um, and it's really nice to hear you talk about it so passionately and it sounds like you're doing a brilliant job there Ishka. I have really enjoyed talking with you today thank you so much for coming on to the Friday Club and sharing your insight with us your views with us I know this will be really valuable for everybody listening um, thank, you. thank you so much so hopefully we'll talk again soon but for now take care and Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie.